first one, but now it's our second one. Um, and we're featuring Josh Tolley with Purple Monkey Garage. And our topic today is the difference between marketing and advertising. So um, if Kiva or April come on, maybe at the end, we'll let them plug themselves. In, but um, right now, we'll shoot it over to Josh to start our presentation. Josh, do you want to be the speaker or do you want your frame up? Uh, I can be a speaker. I have, I have no slides to share. So however okay. you want to facilitate that. Spotlight. I think I meant to spotlight view, but. Yep. All right. Is that, so, I can't tell from what it, I'm looking at. It's got the, um, the, the PowerPoint up still. So oh, take, still? All yeah. right, keep going, Josh. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. It is a, it's a crazy world we live in. I was uh, actually running a little bit late. I had to go to the bank to do a wire to uh, basically rescue one of our suppliers. And there was a line of about seven people. And of course, you know, I couldn't not do it today. So I'm doing this from my car. So, you know, you're, you're talking earlier about how we're just adapting and, and doing what we have to do. This is a great example of that. And, I'm, I'm kind of honored to do this twice in a row. Uh, if you joined us last time we did this, we were talking about the core five principles that businesses need to address and kind of how we can um, make it through this corona crisis, if you will. And even since then, it's, it's gotten a little worse. I noticed as I was joining, there was some conversation about how long is this going to take and Wisconsin said, yeah, it's going to be the end of May before they let people out. And, you know, we're probably going to be similar here. And that's, that's really bad. That's really bad. Uh, there was a news report out yesterday that about 42% of small businesses are running the risk of never opening. And when you look today at the news that 14 out of the 15 companies that applied for PPP and these assistant loans are not getting their money and they ran out today there's there's a lot of worry and crisis going on in businesses uh the supplier that i was talking to moments ago uh, they are down to 30 percent of where they are another company we talked to are are they're actually down 95 percent they're doing five percent of what they used to do so this is definitely uh, a problem and the the survival rate of businesses through this is going to be quite low, I'm afraid. But that means that means we have to pay attention to what we're doing. We have to pay attention to that business skill set, especially when we come out of this, because the people who make it back are the people who are going to be good at doing business again. There's There's been this time period in our country where you could survive in business and not really be a skilled business person. You know, if, if you had a bright smile and, you know, you hung your shingle, there was enough of a, of a draw and a need out there that some people could make it through. But those days are going away. And we really have to get back to how do we operate our businesses effectively. And today we're gonna focus on the biggest problem that we have found businesses have. Uh, just a little bit of background if you're, you're new to this and you didn't join us last time. I've been doing this for 24 years. Uh, buying, selling, helping, fixing, flipping, starting, growing businesses. I've been doing it all over the country, all over the world. Uh, I've helped thousands of businesses. So this is, this is definitely in our wheelhouse. And the number one thing that we continually run into is most people do not market. They just don't. They advertise. They do a ton of advertising, but they don't market at all. And today we're going to talk about the difference and why it's so important and where marketing really plays a, a role and how you can and take advantage of that. When we look at uh, a business, we really have to say, okay, why did we start the business? And if you think that doesn't play into the marketing, it does. It does. We call it what's your C, right? So when a client comes to us, and they say, hey, I want to grow my business. We say, okay, well, what's your C? Uh, another way to put that is, why are you doing this? What are you actually after? And sadly, most businesses, they start because the person liked the industry or they knew the industry. 
the two worst reasons to start a business is because it's something you know or something you like. But unfortunately, that's where a lot of businesses start. And the reason those are the two worst business, ways to start a business is because you're not really going for growth. You're going for the enjoyment of the industry that you're in. And because of that, you tend to neglect what you need to do in order to get to where you really wanted to go when you started the business in the first place. So let's say you need your business to grow some million dollars, just, just to use a, an easy number. Well, now if, if you know you need to grow some million dollars, that, that alone is gonna start helping you in this idea of how do I brand, how do I market, and how do I advertise? Because branding for a, a company that needs to do a million dollars is different from a company that needs to do 100,000. And it, it differentiates again when you talk about what it is your product or service is selling. So for example, there's a, I always tell our, our clients there's a million ways to make a million dollars. You can sell 1 million things for a dollar. You can sell 100,000 things for $10. 100,000 things for $100. You get the point. All the way up to one thing for a million bucks. Well, once you decide based on the time you want to devote to the business and the right business to get you to your objective, what category you're going to be in, let's say... Um, Let's say you're gonna sell 100 things at $10,000. Well, now you know you don't have to worry about walk-in traffic, you don't have to worry about click funnels, you don't have to worry about any of those things because you know all you need to do is hunt down your 100 clients at $10,000 a piece and you achieve your goal. Does that make sense? And what I liken it to is the difference between fishing and hunting. Advertising is fishing. That's all it is. You're hoping that something you have is attractive. You throw it out there, right? This is actually a hand sanitizer. <laughs> New world we're living in. You throw out your, your lure and you reel it in. And hopefully, hopefully, you're finding something that's attractive that makes people want to bite, right? Well, I'm not saying there's not a place for that, but that shouldn't be how you generate revenue. You should generate revenue like a hunter hunt. If you know that you need to sell 100 items at $10,000, then you know all I have to do is hunt down those 100 people. And it doesn't matter if you have a website. It doesn't matter if you have a Facebook page. It doesn't, it doesn't none of that matters. None of that matters. We've done, uh, I think, almost $700,000 in a, in a company that we own, and we didn't even have a phone number yet. I'm not kidding. Because you hunt down the customers you're after. So with that being said, let's go back to the basis of what marketing is, and that's a brand. All marketing has to start with a brand. Your brand is by far the most important element of your business. Whatever it is you do or produce isn't really your business. Your brand is your business. What you do or produce just happens to be what you are using at the time to accomplish the goals of the brand. Does that make sense? So like, uh, for example, if a company is trying to make $100,000 a year and it's 1901 and they're fixing carriages, they're going to need to change. They're going to need to get into automotive repair or something. But as long as the brand makes that transition, they're not going to have a problem. Hope that makes sense. Let's look at it another way. Let's look at it another way. A brand is not a logo. It's not a slogan. It's not a color scheme. It's not a name. As a matter of fact, most small businesses make a huge mistake when it comes to their brand. First, they don't put any time or money into developing it in the first place. Second, they try not to appear small, so they try to give themselves a corporate name, right? You know, if, if I was to start a plumbing company, you know, or General Bob over here, Bob's going to start a plumbing company. He doesn't want to be viewed as a small plumbing company, so he's going to call it you know, uh, worldwide plumbing experts, Esquire limited, whatever. 
because he wants to appear as this big corporation. But then how is that going to play in your marketing? Are you going to have uh, marketing events and advertising that features you and your family? Then it doesn't match. See, your brand has to match your marketing. All these things actually tie into each other. How many of you would use a two-for-one Groupon coupon for heart surgery? Nobody. Nobody. Because it doesn't match the brand. The brand of heart surgery is it's supposed to be expensive. If you talk to anybody about their surgery, I had the best surgeon in town. How do you know that? Did you see the report card? No. Just happened to be the most expensive surgeon in town. Oh, so in surgery, the branding dictates that high price equals quality. Got it. And that's not always the case, but it is in surgery. Now, would you use a two-for-one Groupon coupon for fish tacos? Sure, because it matches. It matches. So you have to understand what your brand is. Uh, let me give you another example. Um, car insurance, right? Progressive car insurance versus the general, you know, 1-800-GENERAL-NOW. Two different levels of customer, right? Two different targets. The general is advertising during Maury Povich and Jerry Springer. Progressive is advertising maybe um, during primetime television. But then there's another brand higher up. You have the Hartford. Well, the Hartford's not advertising during that. Nope, nope. The Hartford is going to advertise during the U.S. Open or, you know, some other event. It has to match the brand. Does that make sense? So brand comes first. And your brand, if it's not a logo, it's not a color scheme, it's not a slogan, it's not a name, then what is it? Your brand is what your company beliefs are that you want to share with the public. That's what a brand is, your company's beliefs. If, and I, I shared this little example last time, I'm sure, but if, if you ask 100 people what do they think of when you say the word Amazon, nobody is going to say the river or the forest. They're not. They're going to say free delivery, um, prime, uh, two-day shipping. Why? Because Amazon has spent a lot of effort making sure that when you th hear the word Amazon, not only do you not think of the river, but you think of those things. If you ask 100 people, you know, what do you think of when you hear the word Apple? Nobody's going to say the fruit. They're going to say high tech, sleek, virus free, whatever. But they're going to be talking about the company. And that's a very important point because when we talk about the difference between marketing and advertising, we have to realize that at the end of the day, what you're trying to convey is not your product or service. It's really not. It's what your brand represents. That's why it's really dangerous to put the name of what you do in the name of your company. If, if I'm calling my business Bob's Plumbing and now I have to get out of the plumbing business and into automotive repair, well, guess what? I'm kind of caught behind the eight ball. I have to do this very expensive thing called rebranding. So by putting your, what you do in the name, you're already boxing yourself in. You can't think outside the box if you yourself built the stinking box. So you have to realize, ooh, marketing starts with my brand. Marketing really starts with my brand. So you have to make a list and really make a list. Come up with like the five things you want the public to think or feel when they hear your company name. Does that make sense? Because that's going to lead us into how do you even market it? If, if, if you want people to think you're affordable and you're family friendly, are you going to spend time marketing at, you know, $4,000 a head banquet events? No, doesn't match the brand. Meanwhile, if you're super duper expensive service, which is great, are you going to set up a little kitty booth at the 4th of July fair in 2021 where they paint faces and brought to you by? No, because it doesn't match the brand. So you have to start with your brand. And I would say 80 to 90% of the clients we have to fix, really it's because they branded incorrectly. Their product is great. Their service is great. 
There's nothing wrong with that. The brand's jacked up. So how important is a brand? So important that all of you would agree that if Apple tomorrow morning said, we're gonna compete with Tesla and start making electric cars, nobody, nobody on this call would disagree with the fact that there would be people already on a pre-order list to buy those cars just because they're Apple. They didn't test drive them. They didn't see them. Quality didn't matter. See, I don't believe that you shouldn't focus on quality. You should. But we need to realize that quality doesn't sell. I know. I know. It goes against everything your econ teacher probably taught you. But it is absolutely true. Quality doesn't sell. Branding and marketing sell. Perfect example is uh, an opera singer, right? If you go to the St. Louis Opera, there's an opera singer there who can hit seven octaves with her voice, move people to tears, break glass, and she'll maybe make 80 grand a year. Meanwhile, you have Garth Brooks who can't carry two notes in a bucket if he had three helpers and he's not even really that good at, at the guitar, but he will sell out Arrowhead Stadium five consecutive shows, make $30 million in under an hour in ticket sales. What sold? Was it quality? Nope. It was branding and marketing. It's branding and marketing. The best burger you ever had, you did not have before you had it. Just saying. And I'm not saying don't produce quality. That's not what I'm saying. But don't try to sell on, well, my brand is quality. No brand is going to say, my brand is we suck. <laughs> we were helping a, a roofing company. And, you know, they, they put on the truck, they put on the website, trusted. Well, do you know why? Because behind used car salesmen, roofing companies are the least trusted uh, industry in, in the United States. But that means what does every single roofing company have on their cards, their trucks, and their website? Trusted. It's not helping you at all. That's not helping you at all. That's not a brand. You're just trying to counter a public perception. So let's start with the brand. Once we know what the brand is, we have to start saying, okay, then what am I trying to do? Am I trying to create brand awareness or am I trying to create revenue? And there is a huge, huge difference, okay? So... It's gonna sound like I'm shooting myself in the foot, but I host a talk show, right? For eight years, I've been a nationally syndicated talk show with radio stations across the country. And we made money through advertising. But let me tell you something, advertising is not to generate an ROI. It's not. If somebody comes to us and says, Josh, I wanna advertise on your show, wanna do a six month run, what do you think the ROI is? We will tell them, nope, you are not ready to have this conversation. If you're putting advertising and ROI in the same conversation, stop it. Stop it. Advertising is not to generate ROI. So then what's advertising for? To generate brand awareness. That's what it's for. That's it. It's just to create brand awareness. I guarantee you, I'm sitting at the corner right now of Jungerman and Mexico. And I guarantee you that in Atlanta, Georgia, there is not an advertising meeting around the advertising table at Coca-Cola saying, well, you know that billboard we have in front of the, uh, on the run on Jungerman in St. Charles, Missouri? What's our ROI on that? How many have we sold? It's not happening. But if I ask most small businesses in the county, what are you doing to advertise? Oh, I'm doing this, that, and the other. Cool. How's it working? Well, it's not because I'm not getting an ROI. See, it's not that advertising wasn't working. They're expecting advertising to do something advertising's not supposed to do. The reason why Coke has a billboard here is so when you're in Texas, you order a root beer, they call it a Coke. So if you go to Zimbabwe, you see the Coke logo. The, the reason why a builder should advertise on my show is not to sell a house in the next three months. 
It's so in 10 years, when the kids finally move out and you're looking to downsize and get something quaint, you automatically remember that builder. Does that make sense? Advertising is to create brand awareness. But, and I talked a little bit about that last time, but let's dig a little bit deeper into what we can expect from advertising and what we can't. How many of you, and this is way more fun in a live room, but it, it's still gonna be fun. How many of you love coming out of a movie theater, right? Uh, maybe Streets of St. Charles or something, and you get to your car and there's that, there's that flyer underneath your windshield wiper. How many of you, show of hands, and how many of you have purchased whatever that flyer was for? Yep, I haven't either. It's amazing, I'll have 400 people in the room, nobody will raise their hand. Yet, I will talk to small business owners that still do it. How many of you come home and you see that little hangy thing on your door? How many of you, unless it's pizza or Chinese food, have bought whatever's on that? Yep, I haven't either. I talked to a St. Charles salesperson. He actually was in our office not too long ago. And he hangs like, what do you say, man? Like a thousand door hangers a week in St. Charles. A thousand a week. And he's been doing it for a few years. So we're talking tens of thousands of door hangers. And I asked him, how many sales have you made because of it? None, zero, not even one, but his employer still makes him go out and do it. Huh, so those are two forms of advertising that we know don't even work. Um, let's talk about radio a little bit. You're driving down the road, listening to your jam. The DJ starts talking or the song ends. What does this finger do? This finger goes up or over on the seek button. Just does. We, we know that. We were teaching some salespeople for Cadillac how the you know, difference between marketing and advertising. And I told them the number one worn out button in a used car is the seek button and it's up or over. It's, no, it's not left or down. And they start laughing. And they're like, you know what? You're absolutely right. That's the number one button we have to replace. Why? Because we hate advertising. We hate it. Let's talk about another one. How many of you uh, have some sort of app on your phone? Pandora or um, Stitcher, you know, some sort of music app on your phone. How do those apps make money? No, it is not by selling ads. It's not. If Pandora made money by selling ads, they wouldn't be able to pay the royalties for the songs that they're playing. Seriously. Nope. It's, yeah, that's exactly it. Somebody out there guessed it. The way Pandora makes money is by selling subscriptions to skip the ads. The entire business, the big building, the three private jets, the, all the music, the private concerts, all of that is an advertising avoidance company. That's what it is. They said, okay, they're gonna come here to listen to music, we'll annoy them with ads, and then they'll pay us to get rid of them. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because how many of our small businesses spend money on ads, right? Uh, same thing is true with DVRs. I remember I was asked to be a speaker at a franchising organization. Uh, their convention, all the people in the audience owned one of these franchises. And they just spent a ton of money on a celebrity and the new um, commercial. And before I get up there, they play the commercial. And everybody's cheering and they're like, yeah, this is great. This is our new ad, yeah. And then the screen goes up and they're like, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Josh Tully. I come out on stage and I said, hey, everybody, they're still pumped up, yeah. I said, hey, how many of you know what a DVR is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the selling point of a DVR? You can skip the, oh. And it was like I shot their dog. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, do you realize that that means for the first time in human history, people are willing to spend money to avoid you, right? Uh, and we can go on and on, you know, what, what works on television, what doesn't and all that sort of stuff. But can you name 10 billboards you saw on the way to the grocery store last time you were there? No, nobody can. Can you name 10 banner ads you saw 
uh, online when you were searching earlier today? Nope, nobody can. Can you think of the last time you saw a banner ad, clicked it and bought whatever the ad was for? This is how crazy this is, but true. I was doing a convention in Indiana a few months ago. It was for online businesses. So every business represented, probably 500, 600 people there, every business represented was an online business, right? Keep in mind, online business. And I asked the room, how many of you have gone to a website and there's a pop-up and you buy the pop-up? Zero. I said, now, how many of you, if there's a pop-up and you have to fill out the email thing in order to get to the website, how many of you purposely put in the wrong contact information? At least 75% of the hands went up. I said, okay, how many of you scrolling through social media has seen a sponsored ad and bought whatever that sponsored ad was? One lady in the back, and it was one time. And these are companies that sell online. So we need to understand, okay, advertising is not to generate revenue. But let's talk about something that kind of people think fills the gap between advertising and marketing, and that's social media. If branding is the expression of your company's beliefs and advertising is getting brand awareness out to the masses, then is social media marketing or is it advertising? And the answer is advertising. It's not marketing. There's no such thing as social media marketing. It doesn't exist. Social media advertising. That's why it's called Google AdSense, not Google Market Sense. That's why they're called Facebook ads, not Facebook marketing. Social media is advertising. But here's where it gets even kind of crazier, and us as small businesses really need to realize this. Your social media has to match your branding also. If you've decided to brand your company in a corporate manner, like say IBM, right? You should never expect social media to pay off for you. And I'm serious. Dell Computers said they wasted over $150 million on social media. Do you know why? Because seven out of 10 adults in this country unfriend, unfollow, unlike companies on social media. We don't want to be inundated with corporate when we're trying to see our cousin's wedding and that cute little cat video. So it has to match the brand. That's why Progressive didn't focus on their Progressive Insurance social media. They gave Flo her own social media account. So Flo, who's a fictional character, can interact with people on social media. Does that make sense? So your social media has to fit your brand, which means for a lot of companies, you're putting effort into social media that doesn't produce results. Now, I don't have my normal slide deck and we're not on a stage with a whiteboard, but I'm gonna walk through some numbers here that'll just blow your mind. And if you don't believe me, when this is over, go Google it. You'll find out that I'm telling the truth. If you have 100,000 followers on social media, which is very rare by the way, but if you have 100,000 followers on social media and you post something on your Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter feed, what percentage of your following gets that post posted to their wall? Yeah. It's less than 5%. But since I don't have my slideshow, let's just use five because it's easy. So that means out of 100,000 followers, 5,000 people will even have it posted to their wall. Out of the 5,000 people that have it posted to their wall, how many people will actually see it? Again, it's less than 5%. It's about two and a half, but I don't want to do the math. So let's say it's 5%. Well, that's 250 people. Out of the 250 people who see it, how many people will interact with it? That means like, click, comment, share, or otherwise engage. Again, it's less than, it's actually less than 2%. It's a small number, but let's use 5%. So 5% of 250 be 25 divided by two. Uh, you're looking at 12, let's say 13 people. So out of the 13 people that engage with it, how many people will actually make a purchase decision and buy? Well, that's less than 5% too, but let's go with 5%. What's 5% of 13 people? No people. So if you have 100,000 followers on social media, you can expect zero purchases. 
I'm not kidding. So, and I'm not saying that, you know, don't have social media. I'm not saying that. We have 250,000 followers. Have social media. I Yes. But it has to match everything else you're doing. You cannot expect social media to do your job for you, which is to go out and actually market your product or service. And seriously, that's even high numbers. You can go Google. Facebook and Twitter are being sued because they even lied about how much their ad reaches. And then what's crazy is if you want to reach more people, even on your own friends list, you have to pay to boost it. Are you serious? That's crazy. That's crazy. So you really have to make sure it matches your brand. That ties into those search engine optimization. And again, I'm not saying that those things are bad. I'm sure in, in our chamber here, this is what's great about this. This is actually my community. So in our chamber here, I'm sure we have some SEO experts. Awesome, great, love it, keep doing it. Yay, rock on. However, okay, we need to realize that the guy with the weed whacker is walking behind my car. Uh, <laughs> we need to realize that if you're doing your job right as a marketing company, and every company is a marketing company. If you're a chiropractor, you're a marketing company. If you're a dentist, you're a marketing company. If you have a newspaper, if you run a hospital, if you have a bank, you are a marketing company. Every company is a marketing company that markets their brand. The product or service you use just happens to be what you're using today in order to do that. Does that make sense? So your job as a marketing company is to keep me off of search engines. If I have to search for you, you didn't do your job. Does that make sense? Let's, let's paint a, a picture, right? Let's say you have your wonderful search engine optimization professional. And they're going to say, hey, you know what? You're no longer in the top 10 for $500 a month. We can do some organic things, yada, 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 boost you up, get you in there. Awesome. But then aren't they telling that to your competitor too? Hey, uh, you know, Sarah, you're no longer in the top 10 for $700 a month. We can do some things and get you back in there. And then back to me, Josh, you're no longer in the top 10, 900 bucks a month. We can kind of boost you up and get you in there. If it wasn't online, that would be illegal. It would. That'd be illegal. It's called extortion for access to market. So let's, let's paint a different picture. Let's say that same scenario was happening in Chicago circa 1927. Uh, yo, uh, Vinny, uh, love the restaurant. It'd be a shame if uh, nobody knew about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, $500 will make sure uh, the lights stay on. You know what I mean? Hey, Tony Tutos, uh, we've been friends, but the love is kind of growing cold. $700, uh, we'll make sure uh, people uh, plan their wedding here, you know? Problem two with social media or SEO, think about this. Let's say I'm a, I'm a biker. So let's say we have um, two competing Harley Davidson dealers and they're both using SEO, right? That's their primary social media and SEO, that's how they think they're gonna grow their company. And I pick up my phone, my, I'm using it, but pretend this is my phone. I pick up my phone, because most searches now are done on a mobile device, and I look up Harley Davidson St. Charles, because they weren't marketing, so now I have to Google them. Bloop, and it comes up. How many of you, just be honest, I click the first one. Oh, JavaScript out of date must update, huh. How many of you update your software, restart the phone, log back online, search again, go to the website, click, and then continue? Right. How many of you just hit the back button and go to the next person? Wait, 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 wait. So now the marketing plan is you're hoping that the tech in my butt pocket works? That's not a plan. That's actually taking you completely out of control of the situation. Problem number three, let's say I go on and I look up motorcycles, St. Charles, I hit yours. You don't have a blue Harley, right? I'm looking for a blue Harley. We know people hate talking to salespeople. I mean, how many people have listed a used car for sale and people text you now instead of call you? How many of you, show of hands, say, oh, they don't have a blue one. Let me call them, talk to a salesperson, give them my personal information. No, 
How many of you instead hit the back button and go to the next one on the list and see if they have one? Problem five. How many of you have gone to uh, Walmart over here on Veterans Memorial? And in the back of that Walmart, you know that little tiny Target store that they have in the back corner? You, you, yeah, the Target, you know, they, they have one in Walmart? No? They, no, they don't do that? Huh. Why on earth then would you, why on earth would you create a situation where by searching you, you take me to you and all of your competitors? Because if I have to search for you, I'm not just going to be looking at you. I'm going to be looking at everybody else too. And all of the things I just listed, you have no chance to get the sale. You're hoping your website works. You're hoping your website has the right inventory. You're hoping your website has the right words and verbiage to make me want to buy. You're hoping that this piece of tech that's cold and heartless connects with me in some way so it makes me want to buy. That's actually not doing your job. Your job is to hunt me down. Your job is to say, okay, I know I need to sell 100 motorcycles this year in order for my motorcycle dealership to work great, to have a profit, whatever, right? So now you hunt me down and you market to me. So then when I go to buy a motorcycle, I don't go on my phone and Google it. I go to you. No searching necessary. People love to say all the time, oh, the internet's killing business. The internet's killing retail. No, it is not. The lack of marketing is killing re retail. If the internet came out after, uh, no, switch that. If retail came out after the internet, nobody would shop online. Jeff Bezos knows that. Jeff Bezos said three times publicly, Amazon will go bankrupt. He's also buying real stores and he's also putting out a printed catalog. Huh, all things that Sears said, well, Amazon killed us, it's never gonna work. No, Sears just stopped marketing. They instead thought advertising would cut it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't. So what's the difference then? Marketing is giving your target audience the experience of your brand. That's what it is. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you give them the experience of your product or service. Because what's your brand? It's not a product or service, what's your brand? Your brand is the expression of your company's beliefs. If you can give them that, they will buy from you. Period, end of story. That applies to you even if you're an online company. People ask a lot, well, Josh, I, I, I don't have a physical product or service. We're, we sell software online. Great. What's the brand though? So uh, every four years I get to cover, because of the talk show, I get to cover the RNC and the DNC. Hundreds of thousands of people come to these things. It's just, it's just a madhouse, right? Well, Facebook is there, marketing. And they do not have a computer where you can upload a post on your Facebook wall. They don't have a Wi-Fi hotspot. Nope, nope, no internet at all. Then how are they marketing? What's Facebook's brand? Be social. So they set up these little like plexiglass bubble thingies. They're clear, they're see-through, but you can go in there and have a private conversation and be social. Great way to market. Great way to market. So if, if you go back to where we started this about 45 minutes ago, you go back to where we started and we said, okay, so it starts with a brand. You identify based on how much you need to make and the time you need to devote making it, what your brand should look like to your target. You then identify how to get access to the target and you let them experience your brand. If you do those things, then success is as sure as gravity. There's no reason 88% of small businesses have to fail, none. But if you look at those 88% percent of businesses, they don't market. They advertise, they have online presence, but they don't market. So you have to start asking yourself, what are some ways that I can market? Now the benefit to marketing is it can be free in a lot of cases. It produces rapid revenue, 
like moment of, and you have unlimited potential, completely unlimited potential. It is nuts how fast you can turn around a business with real marketing. We fix businesses in under a week with real marketing, just totally increased revenue and sales and customer retention and all that sort of stuff. So your homework in a sense is to say, okay, what are four or five ways that I can identify how much I need to make, who's going to be the target for making that and experiences I can give them in order to facilitate them experiencing my brand. Does that make sense? And this is becoming more and more true in an internet age. Gen Z and the millennials are getting offline. You know that, right? They're getting offline. Most of you know this. Facebook is now where old people share pictures. That's what Facebook is. So the younger generation is getting offline. They want what? Real experiences. Real experiences. And the same is true with older generations. We, the, the internet's kind of wearing out on us. And this whole coronavirus thing is a perfect example of that. We're using it out of necessity right now, but we're kind of getting sick of it. And you can kind of tell on people's Facebook posts. They're just, uh. I've even heard people saying, I can't wait for the rebirth of the department store. Not kidding. Now, I don't know if that's actually gonna happen, but people are getting a little sick and tired of it. So you even have an older generation saying, you know what? It's, it's time we actually get back to really doing things. Uh, I know that attendance at funerals and proms and graduations and weddings are all down because up until now, people are like, yeah, well, I'll just catch up on Facebook. They'll post the pictures. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And people are realizing that. So we have to get to this place where where we go back to real marketing. And there's tons of examples, tons of examples. I, I gave one last time of a jewelry store producing more revenue in a day than they did in the past year. You can do the same thing. Uh, we've done things with plumbing companies, you know, where um, it, was, it was really kind of fun. They took a water park and the brand of the plumbing company was in an emergency where the plumbing company to call, right? So they, they said, okay, water park, we wanna have a broken pipe. Now it wasn't really broken, no danger, but they gave people a timer up above the broken pipe and the time was determined based on how long is a plumbing problem, how, how long does it take to go from, honey, grab some towels to, holy cow, the tub's falling through the floor, right? So we gave them eight minutes to fix this problem on the broken pipe. And people are having fun and, you know, people are getting wet and nobody was selling plumbing services. But what it did was it had a, an immediate and noticeable uptick on emergency service calls. Because now when somebody had an emergency in their home, they weren't picking up their phone and going, plumbers, St. Charles. No, they were thinking of that plumbing guy. It instantly comes to their mind. Like, oh, broken plumbing. Yeah, remember Bob's plumbing? The guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call Bob. So you have to give people marketable experiences. Um, and there's, there's a million ways to do this, a million ways to do this. And really tying that into how much money you need to make kind of comes up with some really creative things in your business that you might have never thought of before. Uh, we had a lady who owned a, a uh, horse riding place up in Wisconsin and she was doing okay, but hurting, but doing okay. And, uh, we're like, well, how can we grow income? Because, you know, it's not like people can buy a horse and just take it to their apartment, can't take it home with them. And that's what she said. And I said, oh my gosh, then that's what you have to do. She said, what? Let them take the horse home. Oh, Josh, you're kidding. What do you mean take the horse home? Adopt a horse. So now you go horseback riding and the, the transaction usually ends right there. Horseback riding adventure's over. Hey, come back again, guys. Most people never do. So how do we change this? At the end of their horse ride, you talk about Penny, their little horse that they were on. Well, you know, for $5 a month, we have a live webcam in Penny's stall. For $5 a month, you can check in on Penny. You can sponsor Penny, adopt Penny, right? So there's a way to uptick those sales. And it, it's just fun. Marketing should be fun. The problem is marketing takes the most effort. 
in small business today, what we're really hoping is there's some sort of easy button, kind of like those commercials for Office Max or Office Depot, whatever it is. We hope that there's just this easy button. We can just hit it and business will come to us. Nope. Nope. You have to go out there and make it happen. You have to, you have to market, you have to identify who you're going after, and you have to turn your sales funnel into a deal funnel. You have to start making deals, not just sales. And there's a huge, huge difference there. Sales are onesies, twosies. Deals are hundreds, three hundredsies, if that makes sense. You, you, you shouldn't be thinking to yourself, you know, if you're a party supply store, how do I sell one balloon? You should be thinking to yourself, how do I get contracts with car dealers to sell 700 balloons a weekend, that sort of thing. You know, start start creating a deal flow as opposed to a sales flow. Uh, at this point, are there any questions that anybody has for me on marketing? I really would love to get into the minutia. You know, if you have a, a question about your specific business, ask it, because I, I love this part. Like I said, again, marketing create, takes creativity and it takes effort, but you can do a lot of marketing for free. So does anybody have any questions? If not, I'll give some examples and, and that sort of thing. Plus, I need to get a drink. All right. Hey, Josh, are you yeah. okay staying in your car? Or do you want to, like, go inside? We well, can... I'm actually nowhere I can go inside. That was that was kind of the, the crux of the problem. The, that whole, I needed to wire money in order to get our supplier to survive today kind of threw me off a little bit and it had to be done today sort of thing. So I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Just checking. I'm, thanks for asking though. Thanks for asking. And I, I hope, I hope what I shared today is really kind of helpful. Let, let, let me say this. I, I know that I'm kind of blunt. Um, I know what I say typically kicks like a mule because I'm not one of those sort of, Oh, whatever you're doing is fine. And, you know, I believe in you sort of people. That's just, that's not me. Uh, in, in, in your personal life, great. But in your business life, the reality is that most businesses are failing. And it's, it's time we stop just pretending that doesn't exist. Uh, can you give an example of free marketing? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, yes. So, there's a lot of ways to create some free marketing. It kind of depends on... Um, what industry you're in, but typically you can partner with other companies that are benefiting from your sales. Does that make sense? So let me give you an example. Ironically, I'm sitting out of a bank or outside of a bank. So that's what made me think of it. I did some marketing with a company, a uh, state bank up in Toma, Wisconsin. And what happened was I was helping the state come up with economic incentives for people to start businesses. And the bank was the sponsor of that event. And the bank saw my presentation and they're like, wow, that was really great. And I said, yeah, it's so great that business clients at your bank need to know this. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, I do agree. Awesome. Then let's do a free event in your bank. It can be sponsored by State Bank of Toma. And we'll do the free event in your lobby. You guys can get all the credit for it oh my gosh, you would do that for us? Yeah, of course I'd do that for you. So they got the hors d'oeuvres and they shut down the vault and it was so, it was really cool. We got pictures of it and there's a big vault behind me and it, it was neat, it was fun. But what was that? Free marketing. Because who did they put in the room? They put in the room their biggest business clients. Well, who was I after? Their biggest business clients. Uh, you know, another one, another example of free marketing. One of the things we teach in conjunction with free marketing is alternative routes to target. And I can get into that in a minute, but we had a, a company come to us and initially they wanted to start a coffee shop. And we start with a profitability assessment. We start by saying, how much money do you need to make in the business that you think you're gonna be doing? Is it even possible to make that much money? And a third of the people who come to us get out of the business they're in and into a separate business because they realize quite quickly they can't make money in the business that they chose. They, they could be busy 24 hours a day. They're never going to make money. Well, this was an example of that. So this young couple in their probably early 30s, 
uh, they were going to start a coffee shop and then they came through us and they realized that was dumb. So they got into coffee wholesaling to large employers. And they said, well, Josh, the problem I'm getting is I can't get access to the people who make the decisions. I always get hit with the gatekeeper. You know, I, I get hit with the, you know, hello, 21st century insurance or something. Um, how can I help you? Uh, hi, my name is Josh. I would like to speak whoever's in charge of buying all your coffee. Uh, please submit a proposal to our procurement team. We meet once a quarter, right? And that's if you're lucky. Usually it's, uh, no thanks, right? So um, he's like, I, I, I can't get to the people who say yes. And I said, okay, here, let's, let's do some marketing. You're going to do it for free. Everybody wants to be something else. If you ask a, a famous, you know, baseball player, what would you rather be doing? They want to be a movie star. If you ask a movie star, what would they rather be doing? They want to be a rock star. If you, you get the point, right? Everybody wants to do something else. Well, that means that the CEOs, the COOs, the VPs, whoever your target is and that ladder at the company, they also want to feel special. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want something else. So instead of trying to get access to them going through the gatekeeper, you need to figure out how to market to these men and women for free, but in a way that gets you in front of them for you to do it. We call it buying a barrel of fish, right? You, you've heard the expression, it's not what you know, but who? Well, if you buy the barrel of fish, you now get to know all the fish. So this is what we did. We said, okay, you're gonna host the first ever breakfast cook-off in your town, right? First ever breakfast cook-off. Now the local restaurants are actually paying the entry fee to become part of the breakfast cook-off. Well, so now you're out in zero dollars. What beverage do you drink with breakfast? Coffee, which is why we didn't do a barbecue cook-off. We didn't do a taste of, nope. We are after the target. The, the, the goal of this is not to create the breakfast cook-off. That's just a side benefit that benefits the community. The goal was to get a marketing opportunity with the people you're after. So now that you're going to have a breakfast cook-off, who do you think you're going to pick for judges? So now the phone call that went, uh, hi, this is Josh. I'm trying to sell coffee. Uh, no, thanks. Click. Hi, this is Josh. I'm wondering if Sarah can be one of our celebrity judges for the first annual breakfast cook-off. This person can't say no. So now you got past the gatekeeper. The set, once you get to the other person, what do they want? Everybody wants to feel special, be part of a secret, or be part of something bigger than themselves. Everybody. So now you took this VP who's got a boring corporate job and said, and notice how he didn't say a judge, a celebrity judge. So would you like to be one of our celebrity judges for the first annual breakfast cook-off? Well, now what are you doing? You're filling your judging panel with all of the people you couldn't get to before. This has cost you zero dollars because the restaurants are actually paying for it. And you now become not, not they're here and you're down here trying to sell coffee out of your little business. They're here and you're here because you're the one that just elevated them to celebrity judge. So that's a, another example of, of free marketing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons of those, tons and tons of those. Uh, we, we worked with Wells Fargo in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Same sort of deal. You know, they do this balloon ride where you get to pitch your business idea on the balloon. Well, you can do a lot of free stuff that puts your name on it. So we just said, hey, Wells Fargo, we have a company called Purple Monkey Garage. You're pitching business plans. Huh. How about you let us review the business plan? We'll give our feedback. Now this is costing us nothing. But every company that came to Wells Fargo to pitch a plan, and let's be honest, Wells Fargo is bigger than I am. But every company that came to Wells Fargo to pitch a business plan now got to experience my brand, right? Duh. And it cost me nothing. It cost me nothing. So there's so many ways to do that. We're doing that in, uh, well, I have a rum company based here in St. Charles. Uh, St. Peter's, but St. Charles County. Kavana Rum, which all of you can go buy online. 
but here's another example. We did the Kavana Cares concert series for the past three weeks in a row. Jack Daniels is actually copying us now, but that cost us no money. And what's our brand at Kavana? Kavana is a biblical, it's an ancient word. It's a biblical word that actually means fullness and complete of intention, right? So the brand is we want you to have a full, purposeful, enjoyable life. So even though we can't be out there sampling product right now, we can still give you a, a, an experience of that through a free concert online, right? Now, obviously it's online. I would prefer to do the concert in person, but we're, on, we're under lockdown, but you'll get the example. So now people at home are experienced. There's no pitch. There's no, hey, make sure you buy a bottle of Kavana. No, 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 no. There's just a simple logo in the back and every artist before they sing just says, hey, thank you so much to Kavana Rum for this Kavana Cares concert. That's it, right? But it gives people that marketable experience. It has cost us no dollars because the online stream already have it. And the artists who are not on tour, they're trying to stay in front of people. So the artists aren't even charging us, not kidding. They're trying to stay relevant. So they're putting on the concert for free, cost us no money and people now order our product online. We just did this again. Uh, we announced it, I think today or yesterday with the First Responders Children's Foundation where we're giving half of all of our profits from now until the end of June to the First Responders families what does that do? It costs us nothing out of pocket. Now we're not going to make the profit, but we're seeing a higher uptick in sales. So it's more than making up for it, especially since all the restaurants and bars are closed and it costs us nothing. And we get to do something good in the process. And it lets people understand that our brand is really that fullness and purpose of life. So there's every business can do marketing for little to nothing. And <laughs> Julia said, seriously, though, it's delicious. It is. It is. Is It's the best rum in the world. It is absolutely amazing. But that's a great question. How do you do, do free marketing? I'll give you another example. So I was dealing with a, a car dealer in Nashville. And I taught him the difference between marketing and advertising. And he said, Josh, I've never marketed, ever. He said, what do you think I should do as a car dealer to market? Because most of them just advertise and I said, okay, well, what's your brand? And his brand was he's a discount, um, he's, a, he's a discount sort of car dealer, right? He's, he's not a, a franchise of a major brand. You know, he's not Ford, Chevy, Nissan. He's, he's a used car salesman. But he's a used car salesman that cares. And that's kind of what his brand is, right? He's an older grandpa looking guy and, and all that sort of stuff. And I said, you know what you do? You go get one of those buses, the little short school bus, obviously painted a different color, put your name on it. But once or twice a week, have one of your mechanic reps give single mothers rides to work. Now you'll have to take out insurance policy. So this isn't necessarily free, but it's cheap. You'll take out an insurance policy, but give single mothers a ride to work. And you know what? And he finished it for me. He goes, and whenever they can afford a car, they're coming to me. I said, exactly. Because what does every used car salesman appear like in the minds of people? You don't even have to meet the person. As soon as you hear the word, I'm a used car salesman, you think of my cousin Vinny or something in a plaid jacket. That's just what you think of. So now, because you're giving moms free rides to work, no charge, no commitment, you don't have to buy a car. She, when she does have the money to buy a car, she's not going to Google. She's not going on the search engine. She will buy a car from you. He's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So he did it. He got a little bus and, and but that's an example of marketing. You're not giving them the experience of the car. You're not giving them the experience of your no down payments. You're not, no, what's your brand? Your brand is we're the caring used cars guy. Okay, then show them you care. Let them experience care, not experience a car. Do you see, do you see the difference? That's why branding and marketing are so powerful. Yet, not kidding, I would say out of the last 100 companies we've dealt with, 97 of them are not doing branding and marketing correctly. What else you got? Great questions, everybody. Awesome. 
cool. Well, that was fast. That was good. That was an hour. I know that we were scheduled to go till five, but if, if there's no questions, we can let everybody get back to what they were doing earlier. But if there are questions, please ask. I want you to get as much out of this as you can. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you so much for uh, hosting me. Thanks for doing this for the community. I really do mean it. I really Thank do. There's a lot of people coming again. Oh, everyone is muted, somebody said. Oh. Oh. What are you doing, Lori? <laughs> I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I am part of a uh, the St. Charles Sister Cities organization, and okay. the Irish chapter um, puts on their fundraiser, which is the Missouri River Irish Festival. And one of our, I think for most of the <laughs> runs a festival or puts an event on is how does a non-for-profit, what's the best way for us to market the festival? Okay. We, you know, we, we do reach, it's a lot of work. We've oh. been we've upped our social media. Um, so let me let me ask you a question. What is the purpose of the nonprofit? What's what's the brand? Our goal, our mission is to uh, provide experiences for um, high schoolers to uh, experience uh, the. Oh, let me get my words together here. We support the student exchanges over to the sister cities, like the Irish chapter, their sister city is in a show in Ireland. The German chapter sister city is Ludwig, Ludwigsburg, Germany. Um, and we both, all the, both chapters, we have to find fundraisers to get some money to help support those uh, exchanges because we're responsible for paying for uh, a chap two chaperones, usually a, a two teachers from like St. Charles West or uh, Lutheran High, um, whatever whatever high schools that we have that are participating in that um, exchange. And mm -hmm. when when students come here, then we provide the we try to provide uh as we call them field trips um take we have to hire you know pay for a bus to take the kids and usually it's a couple buses uh take the kids uh to different field trips to show them around st louis st charles area uh, we do provide some food for them but i i don't think much uh with that but you know we try to pay for any of the um, field trips that they we do go uh, go to so that is, I guess, what you're saying, the, our. Yeah, yeah. So uh, first, if, if, if you're a nonprofit, you should really get in touch with another company I have called Shift Capital. Uh, okay. Nonprofits have a lot of resources and tools financially that they're unaware that they have. Um, so contact us definitely on that. Uh, okay. that, it, it'll take away a lot of the pain from having to constantly fundraise. Uh, beyond that though, um, I, would, I would make a point out of targeting people with similar beliefs. So who, who do you think, and th this is really fun, but watch this exercise. Who do you think in this area has the most connection and pride and desire to see other people experience Germany and Ireland? Who do you think those people are? Irish. The, the Irish are, pe you know, people who like to travel. Yeah, the Irish people here, the German people here. So I would, I would focus a lot of my marketing on the idea of finding adults. They don't even have to have kids. Finding adults, business owners, professionals who have proud Irish or German roots Mm -hmm. And say, look, we're trying to get young people to experience your homeland. We want to experience, you know, whatever. And, and set up a, a system where now, because I'm obviously, you know, 
from the area over there. Uh, <laughs> But that's something where I would love to send people back. I would love to be able to say, yeah, you know what? We send two kids a year. And, you know, um, I don't know, McKinney over here, he's sending four kids a year. And you, because what you start to do, especially with nonprofits, you have to find donors that are not just donating to another cause. You have yeah. to find donator, donors who would do what you're doing if they would have thought of it. Hmm. You know, there's, there's a reason why, and hats off to the Jewish community for this, there's a reason why any young Jewish kid in this country can get a free trip to Israel to experience Israel. Because really? the, oh yeah, absolutely. That's okay. absolutely true. But that's because universities and wealthy businesses and individuals, they say, you know what? I want Jewish children to experience the homeland. So we're just going to underwrite. So now it's serving a different purpose other than a student foreign exchange. Because if I saw a sign for student foreign exchange and we have a sister city and I'd be like, oh, well, that's cool. But if you're telling me, Josh, do you want a child who is of Irish descent or not Irish descent? Doesn't matter. I Doesn't matter. Do you want somebody to experience your family's homeland? Oh my gosh, yes. And now I'm going to put, I, you know, I would put in there, we will send you a picture of that kid in that country, you can put it on your corporate website. Um, if you sponsor 10 children, figure out your profit margin. If you sponsor 10 children, for example, you get to go. Uh, you know, we could have a, a, a special event where the parents of these kids go through the companies that sponsor. Your children is experiencing the country. The parent gets to experience the, con the company that gave your child this opportunity. You know, there's so many great things you could do with that. Oh my gosh, that would be fun. So yes, but you have to start thinking based on that brand, what people share your beliefs. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get into that much in this, in this webinar, but we teach a belief-based sales system and it is the best, easiest way to sell because yeah. you don't have to worry about closing assessments, all that other sort of stuff. But what we were just touching on is really why that works. Because my belief touches your company's beliefs. Remember I said, what's a brand? The expression of your company's beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of piggyback on that, to give you another example, and I don't care your political affiliation. I really don't. But I'm, I'm going to use an example that seems kind of political. When Chick-fil-A, the founder of Chick-fil-A said what he said, right? And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. The media thought, oh, well, that's the end of Chick-fil-A. They're done. What actually happened? Sales went through the roof. It went through the roof. Why? Because Chick-fil-A exposed their belief. What did people buy then? Were they buying chicken? Nope. Were they buying waffle fries? Nope. That just happened to be what they spent their money on. What were they actually buying? The shared belief. Mm -hmm. And there's examples from other, uh, that's just, you know, politics people can identify with. But there's other examples of that, where if you share your belief in your branding, you will attract and most importantly, retain people who share those same beliefs. The hardest thing to do in business is to create customer loyalty. You have people doing rewards programs, you know, buy 10, get one, all that sort of stuff. The best way to do it is to let your brand connect with the beliefs of other people. And when you have a nonprofit, you're based on beliefs anyway. So mm -hmm. start finding people who share the belief and let them experience what your brand is actually about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Man, I love this. This is fun. Who else has a question? So if anybody has a question, we kind of muted everybody. But if you are on a desktop, go to the bottom left and you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, sometimes there, there's background noise and it's, hard to hear so we've kind of muted everybody for that and if you're hey, Josh I need yeah. to get you involved with the Irish chapter we always yes, need some good Irishmen yes, <laughs> you do. yes I do we have a good time I know T Miss Terry McCrum is part of that organization too and she's on the oh, chamber she works for the chamber hi Terry <laughs> Nancy very good Uh, mic icon participants list can unmute. Okay, cool. 
we Irish, well, I'm not Irish, I'm full German, but the Irish, they drink a lot of, you know, we, we, we do like the, the Guinness and having them, them involved, which they are, but, you know, of course that's not enough. Well, yeah, and, and, and it can be bigger than that. You know, I mean, part of the, the Irish, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot on this, but part of the Irish lore is that they're, you know, into alcohol, which ironically I own an alcohol company, so maybe it's true. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. You know, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. And I, I think you can even use the polar opposite of that as the attractant. You can say, you know, let's say it's an Irish restaurant or let's say it's an Irish doctor. You can say, hey, we want people to have a better opinion, a real experience of what Ireland's really like. And we would love to send some kids. And I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to have people say yes, because I would say yes. I know there's a, a guy in um, St. Louis proper. He's Lebanese. And he makes a point of when they, they have a young Lebanese kid sending the kid to Lebanon when they can send the kid to Lebanon. But, you know, the, the, on purpose, because there's that shared belief. So, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, when we have our, uh, our festival, um, we do that to share the Irish uh, culture. Because, we, you know, we have bands. Sometimes we have a band come from Ireland. Sometimes we have, air, you know, local bands. Sometimes we have Irish bands, you know, from uh, United States come to St. Charles and, and play for us. Uh, and we, um, we, yeah, I know, but we get it out there. But, and, and we want to do this festival because we feel that that is our, you know, we're giving the, our community um, the Irish culture. Now, one of the things that I find interesting is we have, what, we're 15 years into doing this, Terry? 15, we've been doing this festival 15 years. And when I go to places in St. Louis, 15. they have they have never heard of the Missouri River Irish Festival. And I'm like, what? You're an Irish bar. You've never heard of the Missouri R River Irish Festival? So then I, you know, I asked my question as part of the committee. Okay, what do I need to do to get the word out there? about this event, which supports the student exchanges so that we can have our kids experience this uh, you know, traveling over to the, uh, a country, meeting kids in their high school and attending their high school and, and having their families uh, have them live with, live with them for the two weeks that they're there, which is you know, an incredible experience. But my, my question would be is, Gosh, all right, here we have the Missouri River Irish Festival. We've been around for 15 years. Come on, we, how do we, you know, because we are a nonprofit and we don't spend our money on marketing because we don't have the money, but how do we get the word out? Oh, my gosh. But, I mean, we do social media. It's been better, but sure. go ahead. So there's there's actually a couple things I'm I'm thinking that you could do to – make that a reality. So um, one of the things, if, if you're having Irish restaurants and Irish bars that don't know you're there, you need to go like that. That should be somebody's job. Somebody's job has to be physically go to every Irish restaurant and bar in town physically, mm -hmm. and then talk to them and have some sort of incentive for them to participate. Um, the great thing about being a nonprofit, you, you, you can get away with doing raffles and stuff. So you actually have a, an, an advantage there where you could incentivize, um, local bars and restaurants to get involved and have some sort of, um, drawing of sorts. But what I would do, what I would do, what other than drinking, what's another iconic element of Ireland that people always associate with four leaf Castle. clover, right? Yeah. Four leaf clover castles. Ooh. Uh, I would, I would, I would go to corporate sponsors and say, Hey, uh, we are going to hide seven, say we're going to hide seven four leaf clovers around town in participating businesses. If somebody finds one of these clovers and brings it, brings it to the festival because now they have to attend, they can enter to win whatever, blah, 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 blah. But now you're getting this word out where it's kind of like that Pokemon Go, right? Go yeah. around St. Charles County, find these stinking clovers, 
and you're driving business into CVS. You're driving business into Midwest Medicare, whatever. So they're looking for these clovers or let people know where they are. Let people know where they are. And if they go sign all seven lucky um, clovers around St. Charles, they are entered into a drawing, which means all of them get to be entered, which means mm -hmm. all of them have to attend to see if they get drawn. But now they have to go into corporate sponsors. So now you're raising revenue by selling it to the corporate sponsor. That's where you're raising your money. And then the party is for all the other bars, restaurants, you know, partners to kind of have a, a, a shindig on this thing. And then I would even set up something live from Ireland. I would set up a, a live stream with a host family in Ireland or something where uh -huh. at the event, you say, okay, everybody, if you look on that big screen we have right there, checking in is, you know, whoever, John yeah. from Dublin. And he's, you know, he's going to be the one who welcomes you. Hi, everybody in St. Charles. I can't wait for you to come over here and experience Ireland for real. Congratulations to all you winners. Make it so there's a connection. You have to connect to the people. You just can't make an offering. Okay. And this is where businesses make mistakes. They're like, well, here's my offering. Who cares? Who cares? Offering is not enough. Your, your job is to say, here's the offering. How do I connect it to the beliefs of the customers or people that I'm, I'm trying to um, connect with? Okay. And why am I not on this committee, for goodness sakes? Um, you are welcome to <laughs> join me. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> am I, Terry? <laughs> I always like new friends. <laughs> on for profits never kid about joining a committee. That is true. That is true. Yeah, especially when we have a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Somebody, Matt Hoffman wrote Irish Bar Crawl if they become a sponsor yeah that's right that's right i just need to find a driver who you know somebody would <laughs> agree to drive that <laughs> have you ever thought about um like holy infant catholic church in baldwin they every saint patty's day they have a big festival and they have the irish dancers the kids yeah. do the irish dancing have you ever had invited all of those Irish dance schools to come out and mm -hmm. perform at the festival. Oh, and sure. Absolutely. You know, you know what else you can do? So um, the, the, the church I go to, the pastor and his wife are um, a great African-American couple, but they did that 23 and Me, right? Mm -hmm. And they found out that the wife, to their dismay and shock, is 17% Irish. And you know, so now we kind of, it's just kind of a running thing, you know, like, oh, no wonder you're short, whatever, right? <laughs> but, but you could piggyback on the fact that everybody's doing Ancestry.com, 23andMe or whatever. And you could say, if you bring your test results and it shows you're from a Gaelic island, you get to enter to win a free trip to Ireland or something. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if, if you don't know how to sponsor that, contact me. Now I'm actually telling you this, not them. If you don't know how to sponsor a trip to Ireland, there's an easy way to do that. Contact us, I can make that happen. But All right. now you're attracting people who aren't normally attracted to an Irish fest. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, like everybody who's into the Irish fest already knows about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the Catholics who are into St. Paddy's Day, they know about it. The Irish dude down the street, he knows about it. What you need is people who normally wouldn't attend an Irish fest. That's how you yeah. grow the influence. So because 23andMe and Ancestry.com has spent all this money for you, you get to say then, hey, bring in your test results and you know, you get to enter to win a, a free trip to Ireland or something. Okay. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. And it actually won't cost you hardly anything out of pocket because what you'll do is you'll actually have the trip covered by the... Well, I'll explain that some other time, but it, okay. it, it's not going to cost you much out of pocket. Perfect. All right. Any other questions, folks? Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. 
And I wanted to um, remind you that our next session will be on Monday, May 4th. It will be with Justin Schulz, who is with the SBDC and the um, SBDC and the SBA. He's actually got an office in the EDC where the chamber office is. And his um, topic will be on business succession planning. So basically the nuts and bolts of the nuts and bolts of what you need in order to like sell your business or pass it down in the family. I think you need pretty much the same information, but um, that's what we'll be talking about. And I will send a link to everybody who had registered for the um, meeting today. And that way, if you'd like to register for that, you can. But thank you so much, Josh. For oh, thank you. For today. And, and I know that you're going to come back in a couple months and, and talk about something else, but I can't remember right now what it was. Oh, fun. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. That's cool. I don't know. I think we talked and then all of this stuff started happening. I think it wasn't until like August or September. But okay. so we're, we're definitely here. If anybody needs to reach out, we're, we're a local company. So if, uh, if you need help, definitely reach out. I was doing one of these for the Wichita Chamber not too long ago. And it's fun. I, I love doing these for chambers all over the country, but I, I really like that. I live here. So if, if, if we can help anybody, let me know. We're, we're here to help. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Ash, you. what's the best way I can get a hold of you? Um, the best way is to go to purplemonkeygarage.com. Okay. Uh, there's a contact us form, an email address, uh, phone number, all that sort of stuff on there. Okay. That's, that's the best way. We also have Shift Capital, uh, which I mentioned to you. That's right. S-H-Y-F-T at, okay. or it's S-H-Y-F-T dash capital dot com. And okay. you, can in, you can email us at info at purplemonkeygarage dot com. Okay. Got it. Thank you, everybody.